Right, this is Castle Rising in northwest Norfolk. We're just a couple of miles outside of Kings Lynn, which is a local port, fishing port and big town. Um, for those of you who don't live in the UK, you're probably familiar with castles as from the Hollywood films as having sort of huge stone structures and tall walls, etc. But around Britain, especially in England, castles very much dictated by the availability of local materials. Now, in my previous film, I visited Baconsthorpe, which is up in North Norfolk, and where the, unfortunately, the biggest material I got up there is field flints and occasional bits of brick. And brick's really only post 1350. Here in West Norfolk, we have a lot of chalk and a lot of sand. As a result, Castle Rising, that's this place here, is built of substantial earthworks. These earthworks may have a, a considerable history, even predating the arrival of the Normans. But we'll get to that in a moment. So here we go, Castle Rising, Northwest Norfolk. Now, when I said earthworks, I really meant earthworks. To our right on this side is the what I will call the inner ward. That is the ditch leading around it. On the far side there is one earthwork and behind me there is a third. Now that is a substantial slope. The top edge would have been topped in stone or brickwork originally. And leading around here you can now see the entrance into the inner ward from the outer ward or outer bailey to our right. There was once a drawbridge over that and you can actually see where uh, the, su the surviving abutments are on both sides and then a later brick bridge has been built over the top. Okay, this is now the entrance into the inner ward. That's the medieval bridge we saw just now. We'll discuss that in a moment. And down here, English Heritage have provided us with a rather lovely map of the site. Now, if I can direct you to this point here, that's where we are at the moment. We're facing the bridge in. That is the Norman Gatehouse. But the appearance here is as it would have been in the 14th century. Uh, at the beginning of the 14th century, this was used as a polite prison for Queen Isabella, who was the uh, widow of King Edward II. She was banged up here after um, her son Edward III took, took the throne and she was eased out. Uh, for those of you not familiar, Isabella is the French princess that William Wallace is supposed to have sex with and thus make him the uh, father of the future English king. Unfortunately, not quite true. Uh, if I do my sums correctly, Isabella was about four at the time that Wallace was killed. So, uh, sorry Mel Gibson, you didn't get that one right. But this is where she wound up later on as a, as a prisoner. There is a view down here of it in, in antiquity. Um, there are s substantially more walls and a slump tower showing there. And of course these have disappeared later. Like most sites in Britain, there's been a lot of stone robbing taking place. The castle was built by William de Albini. That's his shield there. Uh, looks like a golden lion on a red background. De Albini built this from about 1138, 1140 onwards. And he's responsible for certainly the gatehouse and the keep inside. The wall up there contains a lot of brick and it's probably mm, circa 1350, 1380. There's known, it's known that the walls here were actually raised at one point and we'll see evidence of that inside. Just returning down here for a moment, one of the minor mysteries of Castle Rising is the fact we've got one reasonably large earthwork here. This serves as an outer ward and great barbican to the gate. But you've got another one over the back here. And this one has no direct access into the castle and seems to be hmm, almost redundant. Now, in discussions with a local historian, he has suggested to me, not unreasonably, that in fact this could actually be an Iron Age earthwork. And that originally, the circuit of walls went out the way here, 
all the way around to here and that was one complete Iron Age earthwork or perhaps Saxon burr and then the Normans have come along and gone hmm we'll use all that stick out a bit in the middle Bob Trunkle. Now the Normans were known to reuse other earthworks or other structures. Uh, Pevensey and Porchester they adopted the old Roman walls and incorporated that into their castle. Uh, down in Wiltshire, a place called Old Serum, they took an entire uh, Iron Age earthwork and built the first city of Salisbury in the centre, including a castle and a cathedral, before it later relocated to its present position. So, is this an Iron Age earthwork? Is it a Saxon burr? Did the Normans stick their one on top? Who knows? You pay your money, you take your choice. Now we're now standing on the bridge between the outer ward and the inner ward. The keep is visible through the arch ahead of us over there. That brickwork up there suggests the work is after 1350, 1360, sort of repair work, and they've patched up the old Norman structure. This is the Norman gate in front of us. Uh, there would have been a drawbridge roughly where I am now, and the walls here probably extend you forward on either side to the drawbridge somewhere just in front of us here drawbridge would fold up and then the gate and a portcullis would have been behind so now walking forwards trying to keep the camera as steady as possible there's traces of a staircase leading up here which indicates there may have been some sort of structure above us most gate houses have something above them uh, for extra protection and here here we can see a drawbar hole where a gate once fitted and this here is your portcullis slot and that goes straight up there straight up there and somewhere above us there would be a winding house to pull the portcullis up so we're missing at least one complete story here Here's the other groove coming down here to here. Nice little bit of blind arcading here. It doesn't really have a practical purpose, but it just imparts a bit of extra strength. The weight of the wall is bearing down on the arch, and you will see that inside later. Flight of stairs on this side lead up to uh, an upper level, and there would have been probably a porter or gatekeeper accommodation in this area another inner arch there possible another gate here who knows here we are in the winter sunshine this is the uh, roughly south view of the keep in common with most Norman keeps in Britain entrance is actually up here on first floor level we what we call first floor what the Americans would call second floor uh, the reason for that is you want to have a raised entrance, go up steps, originally wooden on some castles. And it's partly to render the entrance proof to the use of battering rams. If you go up the flight of stairs there, you've then got to do a sharp 90 degree to actually find the door. The structure in front is called a four building. Many Norman castles have them. This one's rather more ornamental than most. And there's some indication that there was a chamber built into that area which allowed objects, etc., to be dropped on any attacker coming in through that doorway. However, the building has been much chopped about in later times. It was used as a farmhouse. Uh, some even some reference it to being used as a, uh, a jail. Uh, police station and even a one person lunatic asylum so many later uses and you will see that has caused some damage inside sorry if you've got noise on the mic but it is a windy day right, coming in through the entrance here you'll notice again we've got a drawbar hole behind it and there's a matching one on the other side somewhere in the shadow down there that would allow a drawbar to be put across that entrance and defend it here, this roughly brick-lined arch is a later insert. That goes through to the ground floor or basement level of the keep. 
but in Norman times that would be a blank wall looks like about ooh, two meters thick wall at least and the actual Norman entrance would continue up this way and you're heading through this archway here to that doorway at Norman first um, first level up there now moving up a bit we are here above the intermediate arch and if you look upwards you'll see there's an opening in the archway there now it could serve two functions one to drop objects on anyone trying to come through a doorway which closed against here that's a doorway return and again with a drawbar hole behind it but more probably it served a firefighting function if someone had heaped up material in front of this doorway beneath us here and we're trying to burn their way through the door that's the perfect method for dropping buckets of water down etc uh, from uh, a bridge like structure above us there's also some indication that although this is now open to the sky there was originally another structure above us with a possible doorway there again this building has been much chopped about right we're now behind the uh, intermediate arch uh, you can see these uh, return for a doorway here return for a doorway here and one two three four drawbar holes and as mentioned above the archway on the other side of that stonework there is a um, opening to allow water to be dropped onto any fires this would have been the main entrance into the keep via the fore building but again because of subsequent work another hole has been smashed through here that may have been originally some sort of window and uh, it's been opened out into a crude flight of stairs but I don't believe it's original it's um, not in the right place we're now inside the fore building and what we see in front of us is a magnificent Norman archway typical Norman detailing of about the 1140, 1150, 1160 period but it doesn't go anywhere originally it doesn't go anywhere but sometime in the 16th century this uh, entrance vestibule was turned into a room and that is a 16th century fireplace um, this building may have functioned as a uh, farmhouse at some stage so we've got the original Norman doorway into the great hall of the castle now turned into a fireplace lovely Norman detail this lovely sort of dog's tooth sort of arrangement they got around the archways continuing around there sort of zigzag herringbony type thing sometimes called dog tooth detailing and you've got multiple pillars coming down to here now some stage also the ceiling of this building has been changed if you look above you can see that the windows are partly covered by the uh, plastering in of this ceiling that is not original work that ceiling is a later insert clearly doesn't match the, the Norman window uh, reveals and again you can see here it's come right over the inside of the reveal for this lovely ceiling so it's probable the original ceiling was probably a flat boards arrangement and again you can see it comes in quite close on the arch just there so again not original work uh, they've slapped this in as best they can 
Nice little detail there though. Right, now inside the keep, I'll show you first. This is the back of that fireplace. Now that is originally where Norman or medieval visitors had come through that archway, stepped through there and out onto a floor, now gone. You can see where the floor once was there. And this would have been the great hall. Uh, ample storage beneath. And that entranceway there and that wall, that's a cross wall extending to another half of the building through there, which we'll get to in a minute. So, this is the first floor level, and we're on the second floor. There would have been a roof above, supported on uh, supports, which you can just see sticking through the wall there. And you can see where timbers were once embedded, probably went up at a pitch, and met in a vast ceiling above there, which is now gone. There's some chambers on the far side of the Great Hall, which include a toilet, a garderobe, uh, probably for use in time of uh, war more than anything. And here we have an illustration, a little of what the wall, what, what the hall might have originally looked like. Uh, here we can see the four building we've just come through. Beyond is a cross section of the hall, and you just see some, some details there. And there's that pitched roof I refer to. Now, with a basement level and one story above it, this is a relatively low keep. Uh, the Normans were known to build them in stages. Colchester Castle is known to have um, a two stage development. Halfway up the wall, you can actually see crenellations, the up and down bits, indicating the built, castle was originally built lower and was then increased in height, late, in height later. And I'm guessing that this one was possibly intended to be uh, raised as well, but it never happened. So a little bit on the history of the building there. You can freeze frame that if you want to. And there's a little bit of the plan of the, of the keep there. Now we're about to go through into the chapel. Right, this is described as the chapel antechamber. Um, and it's actually that section of wall there is the half wall or the cross wall that runs right the way through the middle of the building. So turning around this side, we see that's the chapel through there. And here we have a passageway which goes out over the flight of stairs we've just come up. I pointed out to you there's a firefighting uh, aperture, a possible firefighting aperture. It's there. It would have been fed from that area. Now, in here, we're now in the chapel itself. Um, beyond, there's a great chamber, which would have been perhaps the inner chamber of the, uh, the castellan or the lord, whoever was in residence at the time. On this side, We've got a definite chapel arrangement. Little vestibule here, somewhere to put the holy holy items, communion wafer, etc. could be stored in there. Little knick-knack area for the priest. And then the antechamber, which we were in just now, on this side, where the sunlight is, that has windows above it. And it's to be supposed that the Lord and Lady would hear divine service in this area, this area, but the servants, waiters and retainers could hear the service beyond that door via that window, so those two windows up there. Above there's traces of the upper level of the castle. Um, but as I say, this is basically a a basement and one story type structure. Right, here we are back at the entrance. Uh, this is a later insert, crudely bricked, 
right next to the keep entrance and we're now going to go through the easy way into the keep basement you can see here there are supports for a roof uh, sorry ceiling supports there probably went up in a vaulted fashion and that window there was incorporated into the vaulted roof in that area and above you've got areas of the what's called the great chamber above which is private accommodation for the lord or castellan so we're down at basement level americans would call this first floor we call it ground floor indication there basement great chamber above huge storage space um, there's no accommodation here for prisoners I suppose you could keep one chained up in the wall in the corner and then second great archway here through the partition wall through to here and we're out in the um, second part of the grate underneath the hall Card garderobes are up there and I showed you some arches upstairs some blind arches led into the wall and they connect to this one here and those arches upstairs in the garderobe area throw the thrust of the weight of the wall down this pillar here and here we are in the base of the castle there's some lighting above this is a doorway that was smashed in later probably 17th 18th century this building was principally used for uh, agricultural purposes and the fireplace etc at the front uh, that fireplace suggests that the upper part may actually have been used some sort of farmhouse or office accommodation um, the history even talks about it's being used as a jail and a police station and a lunatic asylum so that would have been when the the walls uh, when the roofs and floors were still in of course today we're looking at pretty much a, a gaunt ruin and down here there's a well every keep needs a well I'll also mention while we're here you can see courses of holes in the wall there and these are roughly four feet apart vertically just over a meter and a bit and those are what are called put log holes or put log holes there's more over there and there are traces of the original scaffolding from when the building was built you put long timbers in that one and that one put your scaffolding across carry on building up and then when you got to the point where it was get difficult to lift the next stones up you'd lay another course of timbers in build over those for a bit when they're strong enough to take the weight you'd move your scaffold boards from here up to the next level and keep going and going and going those are put log put log scaffolding holes on some buildings they were filled in on other buildings they were left open for the entire time so last but not least this is the way I came in there's the bridge where we came in but beyond the trees and the building there this is the other c-shape or d-shape planned earthwork so there's one at each end of the central enclosure central inner ward uh, this one makes sense it serves as a big barbican um, you can have a doorway and fortifications here walls up on top similar to the other end and it protects the drawbridge and, and gateway into the inner ward this one makes sense the one the other doesn't serves no practical function and again I'm inclined to think we had one big earthwork here originally and the normals have just come along and plonked theirs in the centre anyway that's just a theory pays your money takes your choice <laughs>